professor from New York from the CUNY, is it CUNY? CUNY. CUNY, CUNY system, um, who I have been an admirer of for many years. We work in at least similar, broadly similar, low mass star-ish kinds of things. Uh, and also, I think we both care a lot about the practice of being a scientist and how astronomy is done and taught and computed. So we wanted to sit and talk about Astro Better, your website that yeah. started ten, almost 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago. The way I remember it is that it's the only thing that's ever happened to me where I was in bed and I had an idea and I got out of bed and worked on it all night. I, yeah. lo I love it that it's not like you had this thought about general relativity and you got up to your whiteboard or your chalkboard and, and stood it all night and instead it was it was a thing about astronomy. It was like the meta science thing going on. It was yeah, like, absolutely. And I think that it was an important moment for me also to recognize that something about brown dwarf atmospheres or spectroscopic data reduction never came to me in a flash of inspiration. Mm. But something about helping scientists be better scientists and facilitating information sharing is the thing which literally got me got me out of bed. Mm -hmm. On a 10,000 foot level, do you think in 10 years things have gotten astro better? Do you think things are astro better? I do. Um, yeah, I absolutely do. I mean, if if nothing other than people use different fonts in their figures now, you know, mm -hmm. bigger font size in their figures now than they used to, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that astronomy in particular is uh, a field which is small enough where this concept of best practices and what it is that astronomers do and what you need to do in order to be uh, respected as an astronomer, it changes pretty quickly. I think that information transfers pretty quickly and our cultural norms change mm -hmm. pretty quickly. The bar is higher for communication, for uh, graphical presentation, for putting your work in context, um, rather than uh, for sounding, you know, someone who sounds unintelligible, who uses a lot of acronyms, is the smart person. That is not a norm in astronomy. One thing that I think I have seen improvement, though I don't think we can call it like monumental improvement, is uh, the accessibility of presentations as well. Some of the things about fonts and colors are uh, right. are decorative uh -huh. and like are stylistic and, and do help in the communication, right, right. Um, but they may not actually, I mean, things like, I have seen a huge improvement in terms of color usage for color blindness is like right. a really friendly, easy one. Probably I think this is one reason that's easily adopted is because it affects men, um, and so men tend to care about it. Uh, but in the rest of the realm of accessible science and accessible communication, uh, right. I think there's still a lot of room to grow there. So, so many avenues. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, speaking as a community, we are a community that everybody may have the different things that they think about. Mm -hmm. But thinking about them and working on improving and communicating, being more accessible to someone mm -hmm. is something which we talk about on, on a regular basis. Um, and I have to admit, like thinking about color blindness is is not high on my list. Um, I am much more interested in undergraduates or or early yeah. graduate students who might be, you know, experts on cosmology or high redshift stuff, but may not have as much experience with stars. And I want to be sure, you know, so me putting up an HR diagram, you can be, you can like assume like, oh, everybody knows what's going on in this HR mm -hmm. diagram. And someone may have had it in a class or like me, I never had an HR diagram in a class. Mm -hmm. I, and so I, I really don't want to make assumptions about people's background knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, journalistic uh, integrity here. Can I ask you about the rumor mill? Oh, yes. What do you, I mean, so this is something that existed before mm -hmm. Astro Better. On several different hosts. Right. Yes. And then came to Astro Better as a place, as at least a stable place, at least a quasi-moderated and safe place where at least garbage wasn't hosted constantly. Um, but it still has a contentious reputation as being something that is like not especially, okay, I'll just say as from my own experience, not especially healthy for my own mental health right. when on the when previously on the job market. Also, full disclosure, so I, the rumor mill was started when I was a postdoc, and then time has passed, and I eventually became, uh, got on the employment committee of the American Astronomical Society, and then chair of the employment committee, mm -hmm. and so the American Astronomical Society runs the, the job register. Right. Um, which the, is the primary place where astronomers go to find jobs. Exactly. And now I'm on the board of the American Astronomical Society. 
And so the understandably, the leadership of the uh, AAS is also not a big fan of the rumor mill. And my stance is essentially as soon as the job register provides all the functionality <laughs> that the rumor mill does, mm -hmm. I will take the rumor mill down. There remains a huge problem with employers communicating with their applicants. Yeah. There also remains uh, uh, some problems with the job register regarding timing mm -hmm. and, the ava and, the, and the capability to um, get jobs which may have a short application window advertised soon enough. Mm -hmm. But something which, which is a real challenge, which I think there are technical solutions to, but the job register hasn't implemented yet, mm -hmm. is a way to communicate with all the applicants that interviews have been, you know, that, that yeah. you're probably no longer in the running for this job. Yeah. And so I, I while I um, absolutely understand um, and am sympathetic to the stress which the rumor mill Rile, riles up. Mm -hmm. um, I think it also just does a really important service of also just informing people about about the timeline mm -hmm. of, of other positions. Uh, that's a that's a completely reasonable and principled answer. Thank you. Um, piece that resonates really strong with me, both as somebody who's been on the job market in the last few years and in interviews and been on the other side of hiring people in the last couple of years. Um, is the communicating back to applicants like UC Santa Cruz never just still hasn't gotten back to me about my grad school application right yeah. like, you know there's just like basic communication sometimes it just yeah. doesn't happen right like sorry Santa Cruz just the letter <laughs> never came through apparently right. Right. so I still go look at it even though I'm not on the job market yeah. because it's actually sometimes an easier way to view the state of the field for jobs yeah because there are jobs posted to the remote that don't get posted to the WS job register sometimes. absolutely uh, yeah. things are posted there first and, and there is a level of interaction those are very journalistic excellent <laughs> questions <laughs> so the other arena that I interact with you on a now annual basis is the AAS meetings which I'm a big advocate for our professional society as well and for the journals and all those affiliated things but also the hack days which is Yay. like the thing that keeps me coming back to the AAS meetings at this point. Excellent. Did you hear that? AAS, he comes to the meetings because of the hack day. Yeah. You pay the registration fee. Yeah. And it's been uh, great. Thank you very much for your help in making those continue to run. For me, one of the trickle downs of the hack days is an inspiration to run other kinds of Absolutely. On conference events. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm trying to advocate for, so there's now a new position within the AAS. It's such a fancy title. It's like the director of innovation. Peter Williams right. is in yeah. this position. Right. And so I've been advocating for a while that the AAS as an organization actually isn't taking enough advantage of mm -hmm. the hack days. Mm -hmm. So AAS could say like, hey, we want to implement this change in the job register. Let's make that a hack day project right. and see if we can get the community to implement this change for us. Mm -hmm. You know, if there are little projects which don't make it, which aren't high priority for the full-time IT staff, mm -hmm. but could be fun projects for the community to give a go. Uh, and so I'm, I'm hoping that now with this position, um, Peter could sort of be paying attention and bringing more uh, uh, hack ideas to the hack day, which actually go back and benefit this, the entire society. There are a lot of things that we do at meetings that we do because it's what we've always done. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And one thing that springs to mind is the five to seven minute contributed yeah. talk. Yeah. So can, thank can, you so much you for inviting me on your show and asking me this question, <laughs> Jim. Yeah. So uh, if I were to run for vice president of the American Astronomical Society, that would be the platform on which I would run. Kill the talks. <laughs> um, something which many people don't know is that the vice presidents are the ones in charge of running the meeting. Mm. So the role right. of the AAS, like they could be called the VPs in charge of meetings. There's right. three VPs and their role is to run the meeting. There was recently, relatively recently, you know, institutionally speaking recently, a task force on meetings. Mm. I don't necessarily think the um, surveys and the questions were prompted in a way that would have gotten out that people want on conference sessions, yeah. and so many people also have never done an on conference session to know that they to know that they want it. Right. So just because the meetings on task force didn't say that people wanted to get rid of the five to seven minute talks and that we want on conference sessions, doesn't mean it's not necessarily the right direction to go. Um, that, however, would be a huge haul. It's a very big meeting. It's a really yeah. big change. Yeah. Um, I think there's there's some basic questions of scale too, right? Like. Yeah. There are things that we get away with at small scale. Right. Yeah. That 
become less tenable with 2,000 people right. at play. Uh, but I do think that uh, the, the society and the staff that run the meetings mm -hmm. are definitely very open to innovative ideas, cool. and they're trying to make things more interactive and so now there's eye posters which right. I think is a great innovation and I think they just announced yesterday that now there's going to be some version of a poster pop anyway but it is one of the things that's on my list that mm -hmm. I'm interested in trying to figure out how we could make the winter meetings uh, more dynamic mm -hmm. and um, it does seem like that there is a consensus that the five to seven minute talks no nobody wins like the speakers are unhappy the audience is unhappy mm -hmm. um, and to see if there's some other thing which we could be doing but mm -hmm. I, I don't think the answer is obvious thank you for helping create some of these institutions and these meetings and these frameworks which have started to lead to credit so that hopefully people um, my, my age or a little bit younger are benefiting from spending time caring about how we do astronomy and making it better uh, because that seems like that's part of the academic journey as well. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Yeah. My, it's, been, it's been my pleasure. <laughs>